Hello everyone, Dr. Mungli here. In my previous video, I have explained the conversion of phenylalanine into tyrosine and also I have explained about phenylketonuria. So the link for that video is appearing right now in the upper right corner. Now the tyrosine in catabolic pathway so it will be going into a transamination reaction so like any transamination reaction alpha ketoglutarate is going converted into glutamate and tyrosine is converted into p hydroxy phenyl pyruvate so this particular reaction is it is catalyzed by tyrosine transaminase enzyme that's the first enzyme in the catabolism of tyrosine into p hydroxyphenyl uh, pyruvate now the p hydroxyphenyl pyruvate it is going to be converted into homogentisate and this job will be done by p hydroxyphenyl pyruvate hydroxylase enzyme and this particular enzyme it needs ascorbate and that is vitamin c as its coenzyme and also it needs copper here so whereas tyrosine transaminase enzyme in the first reaction as with any transaminases it needs pyridoxal phosphate there Okay. Our next reaction is conversion of homogentisate into melyl acetoacetate and this particular reaction it will be catalyzed by an enzyme called homogentisate oxidase enzyme and this particular enzyme it needs iron that is Fe2 plus as its cofactor. Before I get into how exactly melyl acetoacetate is converted into fumaryl acetoacetate so let me give you some of the applied aspect in this particular slide here if there is any defect or deficiency of tyrosine transaminase that will give rise to a disorder called type 2 tyrosinemia which is also referred as oculocutaneous tyrosinemia. Now the defect or deficiency in p hydroxyphenyl pyruvate hydroxylase enzyme this will give rise to a disorder called a neonatal tyrosinemia which is also referred as transient tyrosinemia. Now the defect in or deficiency in homogentisate oxidase enzyme it will give rise to a disorder called alkaptonuria. Now melyl acetoacetate is converted into fumaryl acetoacetate and this job will be done by melyl acetoacetate isomerase enzyme. So we don't have many um, uh, much clinical application to this particular enzyme. So it's kind of uh, not a high yield enzyme there. Now the fumaryl acetoacetate is converted into fumarate and acetoacetate molecules. So this job is done by fumaryl acetoacetate hydrolase enzyme and fumarate which is formed here and that can go into glucose formation and acetoacetate can go into ketone body formation here. Now the applied aspect of this particular reaction is if there is a defect or deficiency of fumaryl acetoacetate hydrolase enzyme it can give rise to a type 1 tyrosinemia. Now the conversion of tyrosine into fumar uh, fumarate and acetoacetate it will be done by four reactions here and that is uh, tyrosine into p hydroxyphenyl pyruvate done by tyrosine transaminase enzyme which needs pyridoxal phosphate and then p hydroxyphenyl pyruvate is converted into homogentisate that's done by p hydroxyphenyl pyruvate hydroxylase enzyme and that enzyme needs ascorbate and homogentisate is converted into melyl acetoacetate done by homogentisate oxidase which needs iron. Melyl acetoacetate is converted into fumaryl acetoacetate done by melyl acetoacetate isomerase enzyme. So the enzyme that converts fumaryl acetoacetate into fumarate and acetoacetate is fumaryl acetoacetate hydrolase. Now there are four uh, uh, disorders in this uh, tyrosine catabolism. The first disorder is the deficiency or defect in tyrosine transaminase enzyme that will give rise to type 2 tyrosinemia so which is also called as oculocutaneous tyrosinemia which is also called as richner hanert syndrome. So in this particular disease skin, uh, central nervous system and uh, eyes are involved that is why it is called as oculocutaneous tyrosinemia so the treatment it is a mild disorder treatment is uh, restriction of phenylalanine and tyrosine in the diet 
Now the second disorder with the second enzyme in this pathway and that is uh, deficiency in P-hydroxyphenylpyruvate hydrolase enzyme will give rise to a disorder called neonatal tyrosinemia which is also referred as transient tyrosinemia. It's a benign condition so supplementation of ascorbate usually it will take care of this particular disorder. So the first and the second disorder that I just now explained is not really as I healed. Now going with the third disorder in the pathway and that is alkeptonuria. Alkeptonuria is because of defect or deficiency in homozentisate oxidase enzyme. So deficiency of this enzyme will lead to accumulation of homozentisate and this homozentisate will be getting into its alternate metabolic fate and that is formation of benzoquinone acetoacetate which is basically a quinone derivative of uh, homozentisate uh, molecule. Now this benzoquinone acetoacetate it has got higher affinity for elastic tissue so it is going to stain the elastic tissue and the color of that particular stain is slate gray color or it is bluish black or brownish black color. So I have a video on uh, alkeptonuria, the detailed video about alkeptonuria. So you can watch that video as in the link that is appearing right now in the upper right corner. Now our final disease is tyrosinemia type 1 and which is also called as tyrosinosis and also it is referred as hepatorenal syndrome. So this is this particular disorder is most severe among all the tyrosine catabolic enzyme disorders. Now, the enzyme that is deficient tyros in, the, in type 1 tyrosinemia is femoral acetoacetate hydrolase enzyme. So, because of this enzyme deficiency, there will be accumulation of femoral acetoacetate, which in turn leads to accumulation of melyl acetoacetate. Now, the femoral acetoacetate and melyl acetoacetate, they both act as an alkylating agents and causes DNA alkylation and that can give rise to a mutation and tumorigenesis so the risk uh, risk of developing cancer is more in type 1 tyrosinemia or tyrosinosis now the accumulation of melyl acetoacetate and fumaryl acetoacetate in the body fluid will give rise to a characteristic smell to a body fluid and that is a cabbage like body odor patients with uh, tyrosinosis can have renal failure or they can have uh, liver failure so patients with, because of the renal failure patients may have vitamin D deficiency and that can give rise to rickets and other neurological uh, uh, problems can be seen in tyrosinosis. So these are all the uh, applied aspects clinical uh, uh, points related with the tyrosine catabolism. I hope this video has helped you in understanding tyrosine catabolism and the disorders associated with the tyrosine catabolism so you can always uh, uh, give your feedback or if you have any special request or any special video to be made so you can uh, kindly co comment in the comment section below so i'll try my best to make those videos and uh, make them available for you so as always thanks for watching and see you in